Now, I know you also sent me another question here that I, I think would be worth looking at. This was a game with archaeological sites. Yes. Test, 40, yeah. test 44, Section 3, Game 3. Yeah, double layer sequencing. Yes, what was going on for you there? Actually, gone, I've spent a lot more time on that one, um, trying to figure out what went wrong. I believe here, um, so I think, I, I think it was trying to figure out how to split it, because I think there's a couple of different ways that you could split it, and I think the way I did it originally um, didn't match up with any of the video tutorials that I watched. Um, and then uh, when I went and followed through the tutorials, uh, even afterwards, uh, I think I think this is just the ultimate game that challenges your ability to diagram. So I think this one, my diagramming skills just weren't quite up to par, I guess. And then you got questions like, uh, you know, that it, once again we're very global. We're very like uh, like the last one. The tour group could visit at most how many sites that were discovered by F. Um, yeah. So it can, it's that one's a perfect storm for me. That one's like a lot of rules. You have to be a really good diagrammer. No one to split. And you have to be confident enough to like approach, well, you know, to do the questions, um, local and then global. Is there a particular rule here that you think that you felt like you had a special trouble diagramming? Yes, I think it was. Based um, on the tenth century. Um, I think I really do think it was the last rule the site that was visited uh, third dates from a more recent century than does either the site visited first or that visited fourth. Because like, once I backed that rule with uh, all the other ones, I think that's when I got lost, just because um, it kind of runs into you know, which site that O can go on or which site that G can go on. Um, but yeah, I like so this one. Like I said, it's um, I think it's the way that rule played with the other rules that gave me a little most trouble. And I think it's also a little bit confusing, maybe just because you have the eighth, ninth, and tenth centuries. What's more recent? What's older? Because more, it's it's kind of confusing word because we want to just think chronologically, but then saying more recent messes with that a little bit. Right, because because the because yeah, tenth century is the most recent. Exactly. Eighth century, yeah. So, uh, I, and I think that actually tripped me up. When I was doing the, doing the section time, that definitely tripped me up. Yeah, it's confusing, and I'll, I'll be the first to agree with you on that. So let's see if there's maybe at least a way that we can frame it in a way that works better for us and get an inference at the same time. Right. So if we break it down bit by bit, the site visited third is more recent than some others, just to make it a little bit more general. Right. If the third is more recent than something else, and there's only three centuries, eight, nine, and ten. Then, which century will not be on three? It must. It must not be eight. Exactly. And then going from there, what's happening on the others, which are related to this one with first and fourth? So, um, so first and fourth cannot be more recent. Right. Good. Yeah, they can't be as new as the third one. So, right. what what would be the newest? Because we can say that they definitely won't be that. So it would uh, be eight or nine. It couldn't be 10. Because third right. can't be eight. Right. And then the first and fourth centuries can't be the most recent, right? Which is 10. Good. So they can't be 10. As you said, they'll be eight or nine. Mm -hmm. And then the third will be more recent than something else. Won't be eight. So it'll be nine or 10. Right. So there's only three. You could make that a dual option. Right. Eight slash nine, nine slash 10. It breaks it down a little bit more concretely. Right. I, and I think... One thing, would you recommend writing that in the positive? So, like, my first instinct is just write, you know, below it, like, 10 slash. Um, but I guess in, certain, in circumstances like this, it'd be better to be writing a positive. Like, it could be eight or nine um, versus just writing, like, what it can't be. I found that that's something I need to start doing as well. Yeah, since we only have two possibilities, it's not so much that you couldn't write it down. I think it's useful, too. Right. I don't think you necessarily need to go one way or another on that. And you'll see some explanations do that. Some don't. I typically right. do. I don't even remember what my video says, but you could watch that if you haven't already. That might mm -hmm. shed some light on it. I also love breaking things into multiple options. And as you'll see, when you break it down more specifically, you resolve some of that ambiguity from the dual option to say, well, it's not just eight slash nine in this particular slot. It's definitely eight or it's definitely nine. Right. And this might have been... You go deeper. This might have been something that wasn't worth doing, but I believe this is where I split like three was nine or three was 10. Um, 
And I think I tried to like, I think my mind thought, oh, that's a good splitting point. And I tried to do like, you know, like 10 is in three, which implies, I think it implies G, I don't know. Um, so I'll, I'll look at that one again, but uh, that's, that's, a, that's a good way to reframe it. Um, I hadn't thought about reframing it like that.